Channel 4 News has obtained covert recordings that have never been broadcast before. They show that the post office knew about the faults in its IT system and lied about it for years. We played the recordings to the lead MP campaigning on behalf of the postmasters. He broke down when he heard them. It's just terrible. This is how two accountants blew the lid off the darkest post office secret. It is May the 22nd, way back in 2013, and the forensic accountants, Ron Warmington and Ian Henderson, have been hired in by the post office to investigate what they all think is a big problem with rogue postmasters ripping off the company. But just at this point, the accountants are beginning to discover that isn't the problem at all. The problem is Fujitsu's post office computer system based in Bracknell in Berkshire. They're on a call with Simon Baker, a post office IT specialist in Bracknell. The covert recording captures the moment they say there's a massive problem of post office accounts being altered overnight. It's more than one email. We've got uh, sort of other emails that talk about the Bracknell function accessing live data, making changes to the system, um, not in real time, but it says something from memory along the lines of, um, oh, and this will be corrected overnight, or we'll make these adjustments in the overnight run. Simon Baker, the post office IT specialist, is also on the case in Bracknell. He suddenly says Fujitsu have come clean about their covert night operation. So just to bring you up the speed of where I am, I, I did ask Fujitsu to be actually come clean. And apparently there is a process where, what was that? So there is, a, there is a technical avenue where you can technically do some form of adjustment. Um, and, but apparently it's very carefully monitored, controlled, audited stuff, type stuff. But is it? The accountant Ian Henderson, whom we filmed with in January, fears there's no effective system oversight, and he says so. so. The impression I get from looking at the emails is, whilst, if, you know, in theory there might be those sort of, you know, controls and, and, and so on, that, you know, they're the sort of controls that are in a procedures manual. There's actually, there's no electronic lock, if I can put it that way. In other words, you know, if somebody in Bracknell had a brainstorm and wanted to do something, they could just do it. Yeah, we, we sometimes refer to them as controls for those who wish to obey them. In other words, no proper control. But then the conversation turns. What if, overnight, the accounts of the sub-postmasters, the SPMRs, across the country are being altered and they're not being told? They call this the nightmare scenario. Whether they are shown as you know, a system adjustment, a journal, you know, adjustment or whatever, or whether they are linked, and this would be the nightmare scenario, whether they are linked to um, um, a, a, an SPMR's ID. Yeah, that would be the nightmare. And, and the other factor for me is, was the sub-postmaster informed? Yes, I concur that that is a valid question to ask. Yeah, and, and based on the email traffic that I've seen, there's nothing to indicate that he or she was informed. They've hit upon the great lie from which this entire disaster arose. The capacity to secretly alter sub-postmasters' accounts without them knowing, which the post office would deny for years. MPs were already on the case. But then Simon Baker, the post office IT specialist, drops his own bombshell. He says he's told Alwyn Lyons, the post office company secretary, and Susan Crichton, the post office chief lawyer, about the Bracknell problem. Um, I am going to sort of continue to dig around, I think, just for my own in, in, and to, uh, for my own benefit. And also, I think I want to keep Olwyn and Susan informed of what I've come up with, because for them, to be forearmed, I think, <laughs> if you, you know, what's going on. Because they are not aware of any of this, by the way. Okay. Because uh, I've told them, I've just found out from Fujitsu, there's a bank them, and their faces dropped face-droppingly bad for post office bosses, but Fujitsu knew all about it, confirmed again in the secret recording. Gareth Jenkins is the key architect of the faulty system in Bracknell. And, 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 and by the way, I mean, one of the key emails um, you know, has Gareth Jenkins' name all over it, so it, it, it was absolutely clear that this was a, a, a widely 
understood capability within the system. Yeah. Well, Gareth, did, Gareth is the one that told me yesterday and he didn't make any effort to hide it. Crisis is now veering towards chaos because later that same day, the accountants have a meeting with the top brass of the post office. But worse still, the CEO, Paula Venels, the very next day, is meeting James Arbuthnot, the lead MP campaigning on behalf of the sub-postmasters. What on earth are they going to tell these people? Just a few hours later, the accountants are making that call with the post office bosses. Here, we hear them repeatedly warning them. On the line, Post Office Company Secretary Alwyn Lyons and Post Office Chief Lawyer Susan Crichton. I would say you've got to decide whether you wanted to know about this before the Arbuthnot meeting. And if she does know about it before the Arbuthnot meeting, you've got to make the decision whether she tells him about it. This is so close to, to it's one of the issues at the heart of the complaint. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think we pretty well have confirmed that, you know, that the capability that, 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 that was alleged in, in some shape or form does appear to exist. Well, we, we, get, we will be in a very awkward position if we're trying to defend why we are concerned, you know, the whole issue about uh, sort of Arbuthnot's main concern, you know, uh, how he would react, um, you know, we, we, we can't keep this stuff from him. If, if we're asked a straight question, and, you know, by, frankly, anybody, we've got to give a straight answer. And, and I think in relation to, to <coughs> someone needs to brief Paula. They warn the post office bosses yet again about the, quote, bloody Bracknell issue. I mean, we were discussing this bloody Bracknell issue. Um, are we right in thinking that Paula isn't aware of that? Yes, she's not aware of it, or no, she's not aware of it. I think it's dangerous not to brief Paula. Yeah, so do I. I, I would brief brief her on it. But what we say, though... I mean, how, how's it going to be, for example, if, if, if for all I know, um, Arbuthnot asks her a question about it tomorrow? She's going to be blindsided on it. What we're getting, Susan, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, is confirmation that the sort of facility that was described or that the sort of capability that was described does exist. We don't know whether or what the post office boss Paula Venels was told. We do know the accountants would be sacked by the post office. Ron Warmington and Ian Henderson say they got too close to the truth. We played these recordings to James Arbuthnot, the MP who led the charge for justice for the sub postmasters, fighting so long for so many. His response, visible emotion and anger at the post office. They allowed that lie to continue. They allowed sub-postmasters to languish in prison. They permitted further sub-postmasters to go to the wall. And Paula Venels lied to Parliament in February of 2015. Does it alter the dial, James, seeing these tapes? For me, it does. After all that you've been through, I mean, you've become part of this. Yes, I've been doing this for, what, 14 years now, 15 years. And to think that a British institution could behave like this, uh, owned by us, is just... It's just terrible. Fujitsu, the post office and Gareth Jenkins refused to comment, citing the public inquiry, which is now examining this scandal. Simon Baker, Susan Crichton and Alwyn Lyons did not respond. When we put the claim about lying to Parliament to Paula Venels in a previous report, she declined to comment, which still leaves the lives damaged by the bloody Bracknell issue. It's about justice, letting justice be served. Let's get all the truth out there. Just let the people be judged on what they did and how they did it and how they tried to cover it up. 
For Lee, for all the victims, the truth is slowly oozing out of this open wound. Justice, however, is nowhere near being visited upon those behind the cover-up.